Hey guys, welcome to this next lecture. Uh, in this lecture, we're going to go over how to select objects in Blender. So, uh, first thing you should know is that if you're in the 3D viewport and you want to select an object, you can just right click on this object and uh, it will select it for you. And uh, so, if you want to select more than one, you can do that by holding the shift key and you can jump around and make different selections like this. I'm just holding the shift key as I right click. Uh, so pretty useful. Uh, now the first, one of the first things you should learn that will speed you up when you're, uh, you're getting in here and you're editing things is how to select and deselect everything that you see. Um, I use this all the time. So when you're in here, you can, uh, you can go to the select menu and click uh, deselect or select all right here and it will do that for you or you can just use the keyboard shortcut A. So A, if you just continually hit it over and over again, will select everything and deselect everything. And uh, this is really useful because if you've started a selection and you come in here and you, you go, all right, well, let's move those up. All right, now I'm done with them. Uh, how do I, I deselect? Well, you just hit A and it deselects everything for you. So that's really handy because uh, it's really fast and it's a lot easier than you know, having to go through and click on a menu or, or whatever. So just hit A. Uh, there's a couple of other things I want to go over that you may find useful depending on what you're working on, whether you're modeling or setting a scene up or whatever. Um, and there, there are two different kinds of selections other than just normal selections. Uh, the first one I'll talk about is called border select. Now these both uh, can be found within the select menu down here. Uh, border select is the first option. And you'll see the keyboard shortcut is B, which is what I always use when I'm using border select. So border select is pretty cool. It basically allows you to draw a box or in, in a screen from whatever view that you're at, and it allows you to uh, make a selection. So if I hit B right now, uh, all I'm doing is moving my mouse around, and I just hit B one time, and then I let go, and uh, it's going to stay with this crosshair. And so if I left click and drag, it will let me drag out a box. And if I let go, anything that's within that box will become selected. So uh, I'm going to hit A again to deselect all that stuff. So again, I'm going to hit B, say I want to select all the stuff down here. So you see anything it touches that's contained within that box, it's going to select it. Now you can also deselect with the box selection tool. So if I hit B and instead of left mouse button dragging, if I middle mouse button drag, it will allow me to deselect things. So pretty handy, I use this quite a bit when we're getting into uh, modifying things within models, things like that. So uh, pretty handy. Another thing you guys might find useful is uh, the circle select tool, which is found right here. So if you hit C on the keyboard, it's gonna pop up this little circle. And if I left click and drag, it's gonna allow me to kind of go around and, and uh, pick things that I wanna be selected. And as I hover over them while I'm dragging, it will select those for me. Now again, if I middle mouse button drag instead, it's going to deselect those things. So once I hit C, it puts me in the circle select mode and I can't get out of it until I hit escape on the keyboard. Okay? So uh, one other thing to be aware of is if you hit the circle select key and you're going around selecting things, um, you're not going to be able to rotate with your middle mouse button because of course that's going to be what deselects things for you with the circle select. But uh, once you get your view in place, if you hit circle select, you can control the size of the selection just by scrolling with the middle mouse button. And again, that can be really handy. If you need to get in here and select uh, a lot of really small things like individual vertices of an object or whatever, you can do that by scrolling up and making that circle really small. Or if you just want to be able to select a bunch of stuff, you can scroll it back and it will make that circle huge and then you can select a bunch of stuff. So uh, pretty handy. So uh, there's a couple of other options that might be handy in the uh, select menu that we'll go over. One of them is uh, select random. So if you hit this, uh, you might want to assign a keyboard shortcut, which uh, again, we'll go over when we get into the user preferences. But uh, if you hit select random, just over and over again, it's going to continue to randomize the selection. Now, once it starts a selection, it's going to add to the selection randomly. So if you want it to create a new selection every time, you've got to select the random, deselect, and then go to the random again. And you can see it will randomly select any kind of object within your 3D scene. So another useful thing, 
could be uh, a function in here called inverse. So let's say I've got all of this stuff selected and I go, well, I've changed my mind. I want to I actually modify everything else in the scene. So if I hit select and then I go inverse, it'll actually deselect all the stuff I had selected and select everything else instead. So now I can move that stuff around. So pretty handy. Again, this comes in a, a lot more useful when you're, you're trying to do things like, uh, you know, place organic objects in a scene. I can think of a good example being like trying to place uh, specific trees or a forest quickly on a hillside. Uh, you wouldn't want to have to go in and, and try to manually put all the trees there just, you know, one at a time by, by selecting them, moving them around. So if you randomize the selection, it'd be a little easier to kind of get a, a different feel for where those are sitting on the ground. So as you can see, even there, I mean, these kind of would be a good thing to do uh, if you were trying to build like a city. You could put all your models on the same level and then change the heights of the buildings just by doing that. So it might be useful. One of the other things we'll talk about is uh, the, um, the ability to select by type. If you come in here and you select uh, one of these, it will only select the types of objects that you select within this menu. So if I select mesh, I'm only going to get the cubes because the meshes in this scene are only these cubes. If I come in here and I select uh, camera, there's only one camera, so it's going to select this. You can also select the lights by coming in here and select lamp. It will only get the lights. So uh, pretty handy. And uh, the last thing we'll cover is something that I just found the other day, which is pretty cool. Uh, if you come in here, you can select pattern. And uh, what this is going to do is it's going to allow you to search for something in a scene by the name and uh, try to select that. So it, uh, it won't be something you use all the time, but if you come in here, um, one of the things I know about this scene is that every time you create a cube, it's going to add the name cube down here to, uh, to one of these. Now if you came in here and you wanted to, to not have it be called a cube, you wanted to name it something else, you could come in here down in your, uh, your object properties over here and uh, you see where it says cube 029 which matches the name down here. You could always rename that to uh, let's say a big box, you know. So there it is. Now everything else has the word cube in it except for this one, a big box. So what you can do is if you go to the select menu and then you go up to select pattern, you can filter your selection by um, whatever you type in this, this search. So if you type in cube, um, what it's going to do is it's going to select everything that has cube as, a, as part of the name. Now the reason it didn't select the rest of these is because each of the rest of these have the word cube in them but they also have a trailing number that's been attached because we just duplicated a bunch of boxes. So if you want to get the rest of these, what you can do is you can come in here and say, all right, I don't have anything selected, but I want to select everything that has the word cube inside. Well, if you want to get all of them, you go to select by pattern and you can type in cube and then put an asterisk afterward. And as you can see, when I hit enter, it's going to select everything with the word cube in it, no matter what comes after it. So if I right click and I just go through here again, you can see these all have cube and then a period and then a number after them, except for this one. So if I do that one more time, select by pattern, cube asterisk, and that's a wild card that allows you to select anything and everything that uh, comes afterwards. Then you'll see every single cube is selected except for a big box. So uh, just a quick overview of some of the selection tools. Again, uh, we'll probably go over some, some extra things when we get into the modeling section, but uh, pretty handy stuff to be, to be getting used to and definitely will help you guys lay out your scenes. So uh, in the next lecture, I'm going to discuss how to add and delete objects in your scene. I'll see you there.